Death is not the end. Death is an ocean on all sides of our lives. Deep and dark and cold and anything but empty. Howdy, and welcome to my video on a game called Spirit Fair. I've talked about a couple of indie games in the past, but this one might be a bit different. I have a lot of thoughts and feelings on this game, so sorry if it isn't as silly or goofy as some of my other stuff. I also try to keep these videos fairly spoiler free, but in order to go over my full feelings, I'm gonna have to go in depth on some parts. Now without further ado, my experience in the world of Spirit Fair. Made by Thunder Lotus Games, Spiritfarer had a pretty simple premise. Help lost souls move on to the afterlife. But it was one that I personally saw huge potential in. And it pretty much delivered. I think I'm gonna rip the bandaid off and talk about the game's main flaw to me, and that was unfortunately its gameplay. The gameplay had its toes dipped into multiple different genres, but it didn't really combine them super well. The resource management was alright, but the amount of different resources made the quests really tedious. It didn't help that a lot of the resources weren't interesting to obtain, with some of them being downright boring. B, 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 B. The building aspect was kind of fun, it was cool to put your boat together the way you want, and there wasn't much synergy between the quests and NPCs and the way your boat is set up. As for platforming, I could take it or leave it. There were a lot of places where you could use new platforming abilities, but the most they would lead to is a couple of glims or a food recipe. Speaking of not fitting together, let's talk about the development of the gameplay. This game went through four stages of game flow. First was the bare bones, uh, yeah, I guess I'll just fish her a bit section. This part of the game kind of slapped me with a big ol' helping of patience. I just sat and fished. Early on, you moved so slowly between the islands that you just kinda have to wait. And for a while it was nice to just relax and wait for the next area to pop into frame. But then section 2 hit and it was way more enjoyable and interesting. At this point I was getting a rhythm and I almost had this kinda schedule going, right? Well, section 3 arrived a bit sooner than I'd wanted it to and the entire game became overwhelming and stressful. I was harboring like seven spirits and had to constantly sail back and forth between islands. Every recipe that I needed to make, I somehow didn't have any of the resources I needed, no matter how much I thought I'd collected last time I needed it. This part of the game kind of felt like chores, but not like Stardew or Animal Crossing chores, just straight up chores. Then after things started to calm down, I was met with something reminiscent of the beginning, and yet it was an entirely new experience. It was all coming to an end. I only had a few spirits left to fare, and I had come to the realization that one of them was going to be my own. Every action I made put me one step closer to my own death. If this was all an intentional representation for Stella's life, it was kind of cool. Still, it wasn't that fun to play. That being said, there isn't much more that I have to complain about. Well, maybe one more thing, but, but that's for later. For now, I think we should talk about the visual. I wasn't quite sold on this game. Until I started to talk to that main cast of spirits. Their stories, arcs, and sad endings were what really made this experience stand out to me. And one of the very first characters you fare is a perfect example. Summer is a snake who takes on the form of a teacher to Stella, the player character. At first I thought of her as a spiritual, naturistic caricature based on those types of folks in real life. And to a point she was, but it wasn't without her own reason. It was apparent to me that Stella and Summer had some sort of history, and as I progressed, I found out that it was a lot more somber and dense than I'd thought. Summer is family, but before she married your Aunt Rose, she had gone through her own struggles, how her family pushed her in a direction she didn't want to go, and how it led to a long lifetime battle with her own health. Throughout her quest line, Summer talks of a dragon that haunted her for most of her life. I had this sneaking suspicion of what exactly the dragon was, and the art book entry for her character confirmed it. She was exposed to a lot of harmful chemicals and eventually developed breast cancer. She fought it for the rest of her life. But once Rose passed away, she 
couldn't really bring herself to fight anymore. As her mentor and inspiration, Summer passed away with Stella by her side. In the game, as she comes to the realization that she couldn't win, that she couldn't bring herself to embrace the dragon that had fought her for so long, she asks Stella to once again stand by her as she passes on. She leaves behind a flower, an oxide daisy, as a symbol for her restless patience with her lifelong fight with the dragon. Her parting words, The last thing I can teach you, that all things change, that all things end. This game has a very obvious feeling it's trying to instill, and the visuals deliver very well on that front. It has this super charming and comforting look to it, while also being a little mysterious and unfamiliar. The color work, especially in relation to the time of day, gives the game a signature feeling of coziness that really lets you unwind and get lost in the strange ocean of spirits. The design work is wonderful. Each and every part of the boat has its own charm and identity, and the same can be said for the areas of the world with each area having different wildlife and detailing to really immerse you in their location. I want to specifically point out the Everdor environment, it is gorgeous. The UI is something I don't often think about, but even that has this simple and satisfying look to it that I really appreciate, but none of that compares to the design and animation of each of the characters. They are so unique and really show you exactly what each of these characters are like. It's a great example of show, don't tell, that really hooks you on each of these folks. So. It's weird that I've talked about three indie games, and all of them primarily contain animal characters, but here each animal is used in a way that both represents their character in some way, and are also just cute as fuck. And the animations, wow, they're equal parts adorable and charming. I love the way that this game looks. It does so much right with its visuals, and it gives you a feeling of comfort despite the themes of the game. Alright, enough talk about how this game looks, let's talk about how it sounds. Um. Alice was another character that really stuck with me. I didn't really pay her much attention at first. She was a nice family woman who reminisced on some old memories. It wasn't until she wanted to go out on an adventure that I started to really get interested in her story. You go on this fun little fantasy based on one of her favorite novels. But in the end, she hurts herself and starts to feel weak. I really felt bad for her when she asked me to bring her house to the bottom level of the ship and even worse when she couldn't move. You had to walk her back and forth on the ship. It got so bad that she would just stand there all night waiting for you to come back. Worst of all was the developing memory problems. She had repeated dialogue, was constantly forgetting where she was, and eventually just wanted to see her daughter. You have to dress up as her daughter to finish her story. She thinks you're her until the end. She doesn't even get to make the choice to move on. You have to. She spends that final boat ride talking about how lovely the scenery is. Her last words. When you see your father, tell him about the trees, won't you? I'm sure he'll be excited to come with us next year. I like music and sound design, but the more games I talk about, the more I realize I have no clue how to express my opinions on them. It's good music. It's got quite a bit of variety. I couldn't quite place it in one genre. For the most part, though, it's either softer, emotional piano, or orchestral power tracks. The music isn't overly noticeable, but it does provide a really nice bit of emotion and atmosphere. There's also a lot of lay motifs or recurring melodies within each song, but that can sometimes lead to tracks sounding very similar. It does ensure that the music in this game has its own signature personality though, so that's a bonus. As for the sound design, I can't really remember any sounds in this that stood out. It was fine. I hope I can get better at this part over time, but for now, I'm just gonna move on to the story. I'm not an impulsive crier. I can count on one hand the amount of times I've cried at something immediately in the past few years. But I figured if any character would do it, it would be Atoll. He is the definition of a comfort character to me. He's so happy and helpful and just pure. But I knew the nature of the game. I knew that I had to pass these characters on and say goodbye. I didn't want to though. I'd put off doing his quests often. I'd, I didn't want to cry. I held him 
on this one quest for as long as I could, even after he said he didn't want to be here anymore. But the guilt of holding this character back from what they wanted ate away at me. Which is dumb because it's a fucking video game character. It got to me though. I figured I should just rip off a band-aid, play the game like I'm supposed to. There was a nice little family dinner and it was heartwarming. Until the game told me he was gone. My first thought was that he ran off to some island and I had to find him, but his spirit flower was, was in his house. Just like Alice, only this time I was the one who didn't get to decide. I didn't cry. I was upset with myself. I had to turn off the game because I felt bad for holding this fake character hostage. Carmen's a bitch, I guess. The story and writing are what make this game. But it isn't without its flaws. Some of the characters are written so well with their stories being so powerful and moving. But then others are just not as developed. Take Gustav, who has this really defined viewpoint on art and society, and his final wish is not to live comfortably, but to leave something incredible behind. He also talks about his past with Stella and how later in his life he became bound by a wheelchair, only able to create his art through her help. It was a gripping story to follow, with his Everdor dialogue being especially heavy. Then you get a character like Giovanni, who was set up as being a cheater, tricked you into helping him cheat on his wife, told you about his time in the war, and then dipped. Even the art book entry doesn't have more than that. He lived an ordinary life of trade and did anything to win a woman's heart. Uh, that's another problem. A lot of the characters' backgrounds were told through the art book rather than the actual game. Some things like specific illnesses or causes of death are fine to be left a bit more ambiguous, but there are some key details, like how Giovanni and Astrid were essentially grandparents to Stella, or how Atoll also disappeared when Stella was in her 20s. These being more defined, but not explicitly stated, would have made my trips to the wiki less... jarring. The dialogue was great. It continued to develop the characters' personalities while on top of the designs and animations. It was smart and funny when it wanted to be, but never shied away from the deeper, more serious discussions of death, life, and everything in between. Hmm. This has gone on a bit longer than I was expecting, so I think I'm just gonna wrap it up. I did, though. I didn't want to, but I did. Every time I think back on Stanley, I, I feel it start to well up. It was like a movie when I connected the dots. I was all, ah, it's a silly little kid. Oh God, this wasn't something I wanted to think about, but I had to. I had to think about how unfair and awful it is. It didn't help that his Everdor dialogue was some of the saddest writing in the entire game. Do you think my mom will be disappointed in me? Disappointed that I had to go? I tried. I really tried, but, but I don't think I did it. I like it when I win, but I couldn't this time. I think it's okay. It's okay to lose sometimes. I really think it is. The concept of children passing is something I wish we'd never have to think about. But we do. And that's the idea of the game. To make us think of these things. It doesn't make it easy. I said I'm not an impulsive crier. But I couldn't hold it back. The last thing he said was, I hope it's like falling asleep. Spiritfarer is less about the stories of the characters you meet, and more about the story of the character you play. Stella is at the center of every aspect of this game. And as you play, you find out exactly why you are chosen to be this supposed spirit fair. However, 
that's not quite a story for me to tell. If you'd want to play this game, I definitely recommend it. 8 minus. Adios.